there with me. I'll begin reading in verse number 28. Matthew chapter 9 and verse number 28. It says, And when he was coming to the house, the blind man, the blind men, excuse me, came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Ah, oh, my Lord Jesus. And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were open. And Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. One more time, let me read verse 28. When he was coming to the to the house, the blind men came unto him. And Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know. I want to preach to you with the help of the Lord. I'll try to make it short this morning. Sometimes the anointing makes it go a little limpy. Amen. I want to preach to you from this subject topic. I still believe. I still believe. Jesus asked these blind men and said, Do you believe? I want to ask you something, student pastor. Do you believe that God is still able to do it seeing abundantly above all that we can even think or ask? I still believe. Sister Pastor, let me ask you a question. Do you believe that God is still able not only to fill the pews, but to fill empty hearts with the baptism of the Holy Ghost? I still believe. I said, I still believe. Church, let me ask you, do you believe that God is still able to save your family? Do you believe that God is still able to work out your situation? Do you believe that God is still able to make all things work together for the good of them who love you? And who are being called according to His purpose? Hallelujah. If you believe that, I want you to lift your hands and your hearts and your voices with me right now. And let's pray unto the Lord for His anointing God. We ask you to come down to the end. Lord, that you would anoint lips of clay to speak the words of God. Lord, that you would anoint ears to hear. Lord, minds and hearts to receive the word of God this day. Lord, I pray for a special blessing to be up on this church this year. God, I pray for a special blessing on all the church today. God, for their diligence, for their dedication to you. We give you glory and praise in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And as you're clapping your hands unto the Lord, you can be seated. Somebody say he may stay a while. <laughs> Scared, aren't you? <laughs> Amen. I tell you what, I've had so much sinus trouble that I may not stay a while. But then again, I might. Amen. I believe that this is the greatest hour that the church has ever known. Somebody say Amen. Amen. I don't believe that revival is a has been. And I don't believe that the church has seen the greatest that, that is to come. Amen. And I don't believe that, that the revival of old is any greater than the, the, the Bible talks about the latter rain and the former rain together. I don't believe that the former rain is greater than the latter rain. But I tell you what I do believe. I do believe that until this generation is willing to fall on their knees before the throne of God, that we will never see the revival that our elders seen years ago. That does not mean I don't believe that revival is still real. I believe it's stronger than I believe anything else. But the Bible tells us in a certain passage of Scripture that Jesus spoke to His disciples and said, This thing cometh by prayer and fasting only. Can I tell us today that it's not because of a generation that was stronger or believed it stronger. It was a generation that was willing to put everything else aside and see the will of God unfold. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you that today, when we make up in our minds that we are willing to go above and beyond what is required of us, that God will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing like we have never seen before. The scripture said a blessing that we cannot even contain. Today, Mark chapter 9 and verse number 
verses 17 through 29 tells us of a story. And it says, One of the multitude answered and said, Master, I brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever, when I first read that, I thought Jeff Arnold was in the Bible. He said he's got a dumb spirit. Now I immediately thought, my Lord, Jeff Arnold is in the Bible. And all of a sudden it hit me. And he was talking about unable to speak. And I said, oh, thank you, Lord, for that revelation. And he said, wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. And he falleth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out. And they could not. And he being Jesus said, oh, faithless generation. You know what faithless means? It means lack of belief. He said, oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you and how long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And the Bible said they brought him unto him. And when he saw him straight away, the spirit tarried him. And he fell to the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, he said, how long ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And all times. It hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus put it back on him. You see, the man looked at Jesus and said, God, if you can do anything, please help me. But Jesus put it right back on him. And Jesus said unto him and said, If thou canst believe, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. It was not a contradictory statement. It was not something that was trickery. But he was telling the Lord, I've got faith in you. I've got faith in your ability. But God, would you help the areas that I'm falling short in? God, would you give me something tangible? God, would you give me the ability to see beyond just having faith? And the Bible said that God began to speak to that spirit. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he came into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, This kind come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Can I tell you tonight that just as the Spirit said, just as the Word of God said, that it comes by faith, and faith cometh by hearing, it also said that faith without works is dead. So it takes a certain amount of works, and that comes by prayer and by fasting. That's the works that makes faith come forth. Can I tell somebody today that I still believe in God's power to heal the sick? I still believe in God's power to make the lame to walk. I still believe in God's power to make the blind to see. But it's up to us to create an atmosphere that God can work in. Amen. Amen. When God asked this man, he said, if you can believe, he wasn't saying, if you can see me, if you can experience me, he was telling him, if you can believe that I have all power, that I have all authority. And this one spoke to him. You see, that's why we get John chapter 3 and verse 16 messed up all the time. Well, amen. Come on. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But and a lot of the denominals, a lot of the world believes uh, that just believing on God is all that it takes. And let me ask you a question. Uh, why in the New Testament did the Scripture say these words? Uh, if it only takes belief. Uh, the Scripture said you believe in one God, uh, you do well. For the devils uh, believe also in one God and tremble. Uh, and if it only takes belief, then why is the devil who is already in heaven? Uh, why is he not saved today? Because he still believes. Uh, but I want to tell you what it is. Uh, what the Scripture said is said uh, that faith comes by hearing uh, and hearing by the word of God. Uh, it's not enough just to say we believe, uh, but all the team that happens believe uh, holds some action. Uh, and some action is found over in Acts chapter 2 uh, and verse 38 and it said, now Peter said unto them, uh, repent and be baptized every one of you uh, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins uh, and you shall 
I believe. I, I believe that there's a hundred dollar bill under that pulpit. You believe that? Well, you ain't got no faith at all, does he? No, he just knows his pastor. And his pastor didn't put a hundred dollar bill in there. Because his pastor ain't got one. I need my hundred dollar bill back. I tell you that I believe there's a brand new Maserati right outside that door. And I can probably convince you that I believe that. But I want to tell you something that I will never experience the value of that belief until I go outside that door. Because I'm going to be bad and disappointed. The Bible also said believe a lie and be damned. Uh, so, so many times we can believe. And let me tell you what believing a lie is. Uh, a lie is something that is not full of faith. Uh, but the Bible said now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders uh, obtained a good report. Uh, can I tell somebody today uh, that when you believe you've got faith uh, and faith without works is dead. Uh, and so when we put forth uh, and works together, uh, salvation message is all about. It's not just saying that I believe in God. It's saying I will experience something that's real. I want something that's not me. That is greater than just my God. Yes, sir. If we say that we believe something and we don't have action to back it up, then it's a lie. I believe that this speaker is on. I believe that with my whole heart. You should. Because the evidence is there. I believe that that fan right there is not on. And I don't even have to look up. I'm pretty sure I've got a lot of faith. I've got a lot of belief in that thing that it's not on. You know why? Because i got sweat running down both cheeks. That's the evidence. That's what I'm experiencing. Let me tell you something. Believing in God, the evidence of believing in God is submitting yourself to remission of sins. It's being baptized in the name of Jesus. It's being born again of the water of the Spirit. It's speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. That means the gentlemen, that is the evidence that the Bible was talking about. That is the evidence of faith in God. I'd like to go another way for about 10 minutes, but I'll try to stay on courses as well as I can. But I do want to say this. The Bible said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. Oh, oh. that's right. Oh. Well, I probably not better talk about the signs. <laughs> Amen. That's kind of like one fellow said. He said, my goodness. He said, you know what? He said, it's amazing. When I go to church, all the people claiming to be lemon trees, and they're producing watermelons. And I looked at him and I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, the Bible said that we would know by a tree by the fruit it bears. And I said, yes, sir, that's what it said. I said, I don't understand the watermelon context. He said, there's a whole lot of folks at church claiming to be trees and they ain't trees. Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, hallelujah. Come on. There's a lot of folks that sit outside uh, of a church and people see their cars outside of church buildings. But, but just because they go to church, they ain't Christians. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Just because we're sitting on a pew, that don't make us any more saved. And sitting on a fire station makes us a fire truck. Just because we sit on an apostolic pew, it don't save us anymore. Then one makes us a police officer. But I want to tell you what does save us. That is obedience to the word of God. If the Bible said it, I don't have to question it. All I better do is live it and believe it. Amen. Well, that was free. Hallelujah. I still believe in the Word of God. I still believe that this church has the power from God to change lives. And I still believe that God is going to grow His church, not just numerically, but spiritually, financially, and physically. I want to tell you something. This church has seen astronomical growth since we have been here, not because of us, but because of God. And I want to tell you, not all of that growth has been numerical. Right. Come on. Well, I don't mean to confuse you. Amen. But I want to tell you something. When we stop growing spiritually, my goodness, I'm going to get in all kinds of trouble. Uh, lack of growth causes death. That's right. Yeah. If you're not growing, if your sales are not reproducing, uh, if those sales are not uh, uh, reproducing on a daily basis, you are dying, brother. Uh, I'm here to tell us that we have to get our spiritual sales uh, and let them begin to reproduce. That's called growth. Uh, that's called spiritual growth. And if we're not growing, uh, we're dying. That's the only way I know to say it. Uh, it's time for the church of God uh, to experience something that says uh, just that swelling that you were talking about. Uh, we got to have some growth uh, in the spirit of God.
And I said this earlier, but I'm going to repeat it because I think it's awesome and I think God's going to do it. I'm still believing that God is going to save my family in 2016. And I still believe that God is going to save your family in 2016. Why? Because the Spirit said, whatsoever you will ask in my name, I will do it. Yes, sir. Praise God. Amen. Let me get off subject. Can I have 30 seconds off subject just for a moment? That boy's brother hadn't been to my house since he's been there. He does not, I did not like me. He wouldn't come to my house. He wouldn't come around me. And I don't know why. I think I've got some ideas and I believe it was because of what I stood for. I may be wrong. But I want to tell you something. We've been praying for his brother at prayer meeting. Uh, he spent all weekend at my house with him. Uh, he spent all weekend. He said, you know what? In two weeks, uh, I'm going to come back and I'm going to bring my girlfriend. Uh, and we're going to come to church and we're going to hear him preach uh, the Jesus name apostolic message that I taught him. Uh, and let me tell you something. I've got enough confidence uh, in the Jesus name. If I don't believe that God's in the same business, why am I pastor and why am I preaching the message? Why am I standing behind this pulpit if I don't believe that? I want to tell you, I believe that God is going to do it. I believe that God's going to save your family. I believe that God's going to save everybody's family. If we would just humble ourselves and pray and seek the face of God, it only takes one thing, and that is faith in Jesus and let the works come forth. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I still believe that God is going to give Rock Hill, United Pentecostal Church, the greatest revival that we have ever seen. Right. Amen. Right. Thank all three of you. How about the rest of us? I believe that God is going to give us the greatest revival that we've ever experienced. And I'm going to tell you something. I hope I don't tear this thing. I can't get it off. It's taped down. This thing that I look at every service, uh, and it says new sanctuary plan uh, with that 600-seat auditorium. Uh, you say, preacher, you're crazy to even think about building a sanctuary that big in Rock Hill. Let me tell you something. God said, if you've got the faith, uh, I've got the power. Uh, and every service that I lead service will preach. Uh, I'm looking at these blueprints right here. Uh, Can I, be, can I be real just for a moment? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not about to let any devils with a big mouth destroy my vision yes, or my dream. That's right. Come on. Somebody say amen. Come on. Come on, you know what happens every day. It's called negativity. That's right. I wish that God would bind the spirit of negativity and, and take its voice. Because every time negativity opens its mouth, it begins to stir down. It begins to say, my God, they'll never do anything over there. They can't do that. You know what? If they had a small dream, and if they would build a sanctuary that hold 200 people, it might be possible. The Bible said, with God, all things are possible. Can I tell you that it's not just possible, but it's probable that God will do the work. Amen. How many things the preacher's crazy? Well, thank you. My wife said her. She's the only same one in here. I believe that our baptistry is about to be in use more this year than it ever has been before. That's right. Hallelujah. We got a brand new water heater in that bad boy. We got a brand new element in that thing. I'm going to tell you something else. I believe that God gave us the ability to fix that thing for one purpose. And that was that somebody would be filled with his presence and be washed away and light as snow in that baptismal tank. I believe that we're going to dump in the church and see the Holy Ghost move in this house. And I'm ready for it. I'm excited about it. I can't wait for God to begin to wash away sins. Praise God. Amen. I believe that God is going to fill more people with the Holy Ghost this year than we have seen in our lifetime. You say, preacher, that's mighty arrogant. No, that's mighty full of faith. I'm here to tell you the only reason people are not being filled with the Holy Ghost on a daily basis is not God's fault. It's my fault. It's my fault. It's my fault. God's still got all the power. Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if God can do it in the book of Acts, God can do it in 2016.
I must be nuts. Is anybody looking at me funny? So let me just really step on it. Let me just really step out and tell you how crazy I really am. I believe that this year, I believe that this year, we can bring people to church on stretchers. And God will raise them up. God will heal them. And they'll walk back out those double doors. And if you've got faith, God's got the power. And it'll happen this year in this church. I believe that people will come to church with cancers. And God will miraculously heal them. I believe there will be people that come to church with bones. That are un unequal. And God will stretch those bones out. And they'll walk back out just as normal as anybody else. I believe that there's going to be people that have walked into the church. That have all kinds of diseases. And all that God can heal them.
whatever you ask in the name of Jesus. Now my mom's in the passenger seat in the front. She's she's falling. She wants to go see her dad. My dad's sitting over there in the driver's seat. He don't know what to do. We can't go around. We can't go down to the median. We'll be stuck there. And I just remember leaning forward into the front of that car. Five years old. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, 18-wheeler, move. And I'm telling you the gospel. With my right hand up, that wrecker immediately stopped. And that 18-wheeler began to flip. Oh, you don't have to believe it, but I got chills all over again because I'm seeing it in my mind. And that other wrecker on the other end of that 18-wheeler, it stopped. And that truck began to come around. And I want to tell you what happened as God is my witness and the Lord is hearing me tell this right now. That 18-wheeler moved over just enough for one lane of traffic to be opened up and then those records started sliding again. You say, preacher, that was just coincidence. You believe anything you want to. But I'll tell you what I do believe today. I believe that God heard the prayer of a five-year-old baby that didn't know enough not to believe or not to have faith. All he knew was that granddaddy said if God can do it, he can be done. I'm off my message and I'm just going to stay off of it for a moment. I'm just going to talk to you about what God has done for me. My mama, back in 1992, had a horse step on the middle of her foot and it busted her foot. All the pieces that exposed it. And she had horse manure on it. And if you know anything about horses, you'll know one thing. That horse manure, it carries tetanus. Uh, and when you get tetanus, buddy, it's a bad deal. Uh, and it got to the place she wouldn't go to the doctor. Her jaws had started locking up. Uh, and we went down to the med, uh, to the big hospital in, in Jackson, Mississippi. And I can't even remember the name of it. Uh, but while we were there, the doctor came in and he said, I want to tell you something. They don't look good. He said, in the state of Mississippi, uh, we've not ever had a case that has went this far where the jaws were completely locked up. Uh, that the woman lived or the man lived. We've never had a case like this. We've never had it turn out good so I just want you to prepare for the worst. But I want to tell you something. There was a daddy that began to pray and there was a little boy that began to pray. God, you gave me my mama. Lord Jesus, you can do it. God, if you heal in the Bible, if you heal in the New Testament, you can heal right now. God, if you were the God of the Old Testament and you brought those out of Egypt, you can do it now. I want to tell you something. That two days later, my mama was home. She was perfectly normal. There was no Brother, okay, glad you asked. There's a young lady that comes to this church every now and then, 
because she's friends uh, with Sister Kim Bingham. Her name is Shana Bennett. Uh, and she was sitting right over there. They brought her to church because uh, the doctor had uttered those words about cancer. Uh, but can I tell you today, 